Hi, I'm Tiffany and welcome to Grant Chatter, a channel devoted to helping you grow your grant seeking results. Here's what we'll cover in this video. One, why data is required in grant proposals and two, the three types of data most often required in grant proposals. The needs assessment or data about the community your organization serves. Demographics or data about the people your organization serves, and evaluation, or data that analyzes how well your organization served these people in that community. A comprehensive set of links to free online resources for all three of these data types is found in the description below, and there are timestamps in the description below as well, so you can focus on any part of this video. So, number one, why is data required in grant proposals? Over my 30 years in nonprofit work, the process of grant seeking has changed enormously. Here's why. Way back then, grant funders had a more general goal of supporting nonprofits. For example, a local bank branch manager would set aside a budget of a few dollars to support their community. The nonprofits might meet with the branch manager or send a two page letter with a request. What changed? First, the number of registered nonprofit organizations exploded in the 1990s and early 2000s. Grant funders were swamped with proposals. Their reaction was to specialize, so the local bank branch now offers grant dollars in ways that relate to their industry, such as financial literacy. Also, grant funders saw that their own audiences and supporters wanted to see impact from those grant dollars. So, they developed standardized sets of metrics for grantees to submit. The funders use this data to provide a comprehensive and consistent overview of what has happened as a result of their grant support. Number two, let's go from why to what, the three types of data most often requested in grant proposals. First, needs assessments. Here, the grant funder wants to know what you know about the community you serve. The question is often asked in a proposal like this, what needs will be addressed? To provide a complete answer to this question, you have at your disposal lots of regional authorities that publish reports about many issues in a community. I'll name several of these here, and they are also listed and linked in the description below, all free. Hospitals are required to publish a community health needs assessment, usually found on their website, full of data about health issues and priorities in the area. The local library or closest university collects research on many community needs from food and shelter to health and education. And local law enforcement and local governments will publish studies on safety needs. Here is a fictional example of how to use a needs assessment. Let's say that your organization provides art therapy to help people address anxiety and will expand programs to serve more youth. Perhaps in the list of sources I just mentioned, you download the local hospital's community health needs assessment. You find that the report lists anxiety among junior high youth as an increasing concern. So your organization has found a specific youth population in need of your services. And the person reviewing the grant proposal sees a clear connection between a need and how that need will be met. Next, demographics. So you just used research reports to show what the community needs are. Now you'll show the grant reviewer that with demographics, you know who lives in your community and who your program will serve. Grant proposals often ask this question this way. Describe the target population to be served or provide a breakdown of who your organization will serve. Your answer will often include some or all of this list of common demographics data, age, race and ethnicity, gender, income levels, education levels, health status, location of people to be served, such as city, township, county, etc. Where do you get this information? Either one, by collecting it from the people you already serve, 
usually as the clients are being registered for organization services, and or two, by describing the population where you want to expand services. Linked in the description below are these three free online searchable data sets. The American Community Survey. This is census information that is pulled into an exhaustive collection which you can search by geographic location, health issue, poverty levels, and on and on. The link below is an information guide to help you navigate the deep waters of census information. Specifically for data about children, check out the Kids Count website, which uses all kinds of data for all kinds of needs. The link below takes you to the how-to page. How about the other end of the age spectrum? Demographics regarding older adults. The AARP, or American Association of Retired Persons, collects and reports on extensive data and research. The link below is an informational page. There is also an AARP International Research page regarding older adults. That link is also listed below. Lastly, the data type called Evaluation. So far, we have gathered the data for the community and people to be served. Now, we use data that records your program's results. Grant proposals ask this question in multiple ways, usually something like these, which sound a bit different, but have a general theme. Explain the anticipated outputs and outcomes. Explain the data collection and evaluation process. Describe the evaluation process to be used for this project. What are the anticipated benefits? Or, how will you know your program has been effective? Evaluation very often comes in two parts, outputs and outcomes. They are not the same thing, but are often treated as such. I'm going back to an example I used earlier in this video, an organization that provides art therapy. In my fictional example, the organization was expanding services to junior high youth who were found in a study by the hospital to be experiencing high levels of stress and anxiety. I'll list a sample set of outputs and outcomes from that fictional project, but let's define those terms first. An output is a numerical result. An outcome is a change that has occurred. Now, let's list sample outputs or numerical results of art therapy. Three art therapists served 50 youth ages 12 to 14 from three junior high schools in the region. Four types of art were offered, finger painting, doodling, scribbling, making collages. The program lasted one semester of school. Sample outcomes or measurements of positive change due to art therapy, a percent improvement in communication and concentration skills, a percent reduction in feelings of isolation, a percent increase in perception of self-esteem, confidence, and self-awareness. Now, as you're watching this video, are you concerned that your organization doesn't have the staff, the systems, or the time to gather this evaluation data? Well, I have a solution for you. Hire a professional evaluator because grant funders will often let you ask them to cover the cost of the evaluation service in your grant proposal. And if you don't know where to find an evaluator, I do. Every profession has a professional association. So look to the American Evaluation Association and its Find an Evaluator search tool linked in the description below. You can search by location or expertise or both. And don't let the name fool you. The American Evaluation Association offers this search tool inside and outside of the United States. All of the same link below. That brings us to the end of this second video in the How to Write a Grant playlist. Thank you so much for your time here at Grant Chatter. I hope you find that these videos equip you with the tools you need to grow your grant seeking results. As this video is released, it is the season of the cicada, which only happens every 17 years, so this closing B-roll marks the occasion. See you in the next video.